Hey, what's up everybody? Video 44 coming at you another video. All right, so we're gonna attempt to do this like we tried to yesterday and failed to, but uh, we got the device here. As you can clearly see, my face is lit up like screen mask or something. And uh, we got Lakers results here, 109-101. Uh, uh, not the most uh, watched game from my eyesight, to be honest with you guys. I was trying my very best, but it was a lot going on on my end. So I only half watched this game, to be honest. But I can give you what I see here in regards to the stats and just basically give you a little understanding of what it is I was watching. Uh, first of all, the Los Angeles Lakers uh, shot 50% from the field. So that's where we really won the game. Uh, 41 at 82. Got to love that type of percentage. And our three-point shooting was about 33%. Not what we used to, but we only attempted 30 of them, so we kept our attempts down based on what it is we were expecting from ourselves from a percentage standpoint. So I like the game plan uh, as it pertains to that. 77% um, from the free throw line to their 70. Of course, you want to mention that the field goals for the uh, Sacramento Kings were 38%, uh, and they were 15 of 50 from behind the arc at 30%. Uh, so, yeah, that's 50, 50 shots. I don't know if they're pleased with that, but we certainly are. Won the rebound a total by one, uh, 46 to 47. And uh, where we really made our money uh, was basically uh, in the term. No, uh, they had us in turnovers, 20 to 16. Uh, so I think we can really say we, we did okay uh, rebounding the ball from the defensive rebounding standpoint. Kept them second chance points down to a minimum for them. Uh, 43 to 34 so you know this was this was a game where um, you saw our backcourt really shine you know if, if you really want to give credit to anybody you got to go to uh, D'Angelo Russell once again for the fourth game in a row he looked fantastic for the Los Angeles Lakers scoring 21 points eight assists three rebounds of eight of 12 shooting uh, two of five from behind the arc you just love that from D'Lo and Gabe Vincent uh, got his efficiency going today with 18 points, 4 out of 8 from behind the arc, 7 of 12 from the field, and a plus 11 for the Lakers. Two assists added to his total. Um, you want to give Rui Hachimura credit, of whom I haven't been mentioning enough. He's really been playing great. 13.6 rebounds and assists accredited to his name, a 5 of 10 field goal shooting, 1 of 3 from behind the arc. And Torian Prince had a good game today. Only two fouls, Torian Prince. There we go. That's how we try to... We, we, we're joking about it, but it's, it's one of those things where he's been picking up fouls like crazy. And uh, he had two of five from behind the arc for 13 points, five of nine field goal shooting with two steals and seven rebounds and an assist, a credit to his name on a plus 12. So uh, we love that. And then Christian Wood got his minutes tonight. 20 minutes of play. He was five of seven from the field um, and had 13 points, four rebounds as well. So... That's really what it is uh, from a good standpoint. Uh, you know, five players in double figures. We like that. Max Lewis chipped in with seven points in 15 minutes, three or five from the field. So I really love what I'm seeing from Max Lewis. He's just playing with a lot of confidence, uh, taking good shots. He's just playing great ball right now, honestly. Uh, Alex Fudge uh, chipped in with four points, two rebounds on a nice tip-in dunk. Um, earlier on or rather late in the fourth quarter to be exact uh castleton chipped in with seven boards and two blocks with four points uh so we love that in 15 minutes that's really good production in a short amount of time and um that's where the good actually ends to be honest with you i love jackson hayes numbers even though he only had uh five points uh he got to the line three out of four and uh, of course he got a field goal there but he also had five rebounds two assists one steal uh, to go with a plus 14, the high man for our basketball club. So you like what Jackson Hayes has been doing in all of these preseason games, really making his money with the Lakers. Um, but it was a lot of bad, too. Uh, Got to be honest, our efficiency was not great in certain areas, uh, particularly with the guys who've been struggling, scoot, shooting the ball a little bit. Uh, Demoy Hodges, 0 for 4 from behind the arc. 0 for 4 from the field, 0 for 2 from behind the arc. Uh, did not score, but got a rebound and a steal. And Jalen Huchifino struggling. He, he hasn't hit many shots at all with the Lakers. One of five, two free throws accredited, but did get five assists and six boards and a steal. So I really do appreciate that he was able to get a plus four despite not being able to hit shots. He's still finding other ways of helping his team, a true point guard. Uh, that's going to ascend very well for our squad. So Max Christie, two of nine from the field, 0 of three from behind the arc, three of three from the free throw line. Also found ways to chip in in other areas. Five rebounds, four assists, and four turnovers. So Max Christie with a plus one. I want to see better from Max, man. I, I'm just not quite seeing what I need to see from Christie in these first four preseason games. But he's a young player. This is the first time he's really getting an opportunity to play with the squad. And I know he can help us on the defensive end, uh, even if the offense isn't coming around. So 
some of the passes he made just just not very good passes man uh that was really my issue with him last year he's not the greatest passer in the world decision making with passes really needs to improve quite a bit before he's quite ready to take on that backup shooting guard role that we all thought he would be ready for he's just not there yet uh but he'll get there in due time uh scotty pippen was a minus eight he didn't play many minutes at all with six minutes uh, um so that's that's nothing to look at there one assist one rebound um alex fudge was a minus 10 on his but you know limited minutes for guys like that eight minutes for fudge what are you gonna do in such a short amount of time so um all in all i thought it was a good team win you know we found ourselves in a position to succeed because our starters really really shine d is just playing um, like a monstrous um like a monster right there um I really can't stress how fantastic he's been. A plus 10 out there. Did have three turnovers, but accredited himself with a block and a steal. So he's helping on both sides of the floor. He just, I don't know if this is fool's goal with D'Lo, because we've seen D'Lo play really well, and we've seen him struggle quite a bit. I know a lot of his struggles had to do with how he was feeling physically a lot of the time when he did, but he's in great shape, and he just looks like the guy we drafted, man. He looks like the, sec the second overall pick, and if he can turn around and, and, and have himself a huge season, um, he's going to earn himself some money, man. I know we have him on a two-year deal, but I, I can totally see the Lakers investing in him if this continues. I can also see a world where the Lakers sell high and trade him uh, while he's playing as well. But I I really love what I'm seeing, man. There's no way around that. Uh, 21 points, 8 assists, 1 steal, 1 block, 3 rebounds, uh, 8 of 12 shooting, 2 of 5 from the 3. I mean, you just... You can't take anything away from a guy who's playing this well in four straight basketball games. I think, if anything, we just need to make sure that he's not uh, losing any of his confidence and re or obviously find himself in a position to not uh, be healthy for us because that's really what is determined for him. If the health is there, D'Lo is going to play great. And that's what we're learning, man. And, of course, I'm having trouble with this, uh, this device right now. But I do have our stats for our entire game in front of me give the credit to the Sacramento Kings as well for putting up a pretty good game. Um, you know what I mean? They, they're more or less, uh, had the assists win there 30 to 25. Um, let's see. We really got them in, in more than a couple areas. We had, uh, four blocks. They had two, six steals for both teams. Uh, we had 24 points off of 20 turnovers, so we definitely want to cut down our turnovers. They had 16 points, 16 turnovers with 14 points off of those. So for us, we just we need to make sure that we zero in on the tape in this particular matchup to see why we were turning the ball over so much, and ultimately led to uh, to us still getting a victory, <laughs> honestly. But we did have an 18-point lead that we blew in this game, and that is a story for us because we also had some big leads in the previous matchups against other squads where we know we should have done better um had bigger wins rather but we take what we can get you know the los angeles lakers feel good about their situation as it pertains to uh beating a team like like the sacramento kings who we know uh has a lot of talent down there clearly uh you want to give credit to De'Aaron fox who played a good game sabonis who played a good game uh you know i, I didn't see uh Keegan Murray at all. He didn't play, but we did see Malik Monk shoot around a little bit. Uh, uh, Kevin Herter was out there. JaVale McGee got quite a bit of minutes, as I expected he would. Uh, so, you know, the Sacramento Kings are a deep team. We know what they can do. Uh, I don't think they're hanging their head in regards to losing this basketball game. They just ran into a Los Angeles Lakers team that was a bit more prepared tonight and uh, just got the, the upper hand, basically. Um, of course, I'm getting absolutely no service with this thing right now. But at least we were able to get through the team stats. I want to get to our individual stats a bit more for the opponent. But it just doesn't look like it's going to allow me to do that. So we'll roll with what we got here. But all in all, I'm really pleased with the L.A. Lakers, man. We, we definitely found ourselves being the victors in this particular matchup. Um, we're 3-1 and one on this uh, preseason schedule. And you got to love that with Golden State coming up once again. Hopefully we can get a victory there because they definitely got us. Uh, but that game will be coming up on Friday. And, uh, you know, what can I say, man? This is this is a really good win for the L.A. Lakers. You know, we found ourselves being on the winning side of things. D'Lo is playing great. Gabe Vincent bounced back after having some bad shooting performances. Um, there's no there's no complaining here, man. I think our team looks great. Uh, and I do think that some of the guys who aren't able to hit shots like Jalen and, and Max Christie, they're going to come around. And when they do, we'll be even even fuller basketball team. You take into account there was no AD, no Vando, no Braun, uh, no uh, 
what's the, what's my guy's name? Uh, Cam Reddish. So f with four guys missing from the from the from the fold, we really did well, man. And for me, I, I really like what I saw from from Torian Prince from a shooting standpoint. He's been really efficient for us. If we could just keep him on the floor like we did tonight with with only two fouls, uh, we're gonna see opportunities for him to be a real sturdy vet for us, man. He's been very impressive in a short amount of time. Uh, keeping our guys healthy is all it's about. You know what I mean? We got guys who are fresh, with fresh legs and stuff like that. I want to see them still playing like this in January, in February, in March. If we can still have our team playing this well, we will be one of the best teams in the league. Uh, that's why I'm only kind of tempering my expectations is to say guys are playing a certain way, but I don't know that it can sustain throughout the course of an 81-game season, and that's what you want to see. You want to see D'Lo do this all year long, playoffs and finals, and that's just going to be determined by how consistent he can be and how well he continues to to stay healthy uh but the conditioning's there the team is deep and i'm really excited about some of the players who are not named our stars you know not named braun and ad and and and, and um austin reeves you know those guys are, are solidified we know what they're going to do but if you can get something out of guys like max lewis and and gabe vincent torian prince Rui hot tomorrow if you can get something from everyone else I don't. I don't see we're losing. We're not going to lose too many games this year, man. We're going to do. We're going to do exactly what we expect to do with the team mentality, and so that's really what it's about, man. I think uh, Coach Ham's done a good job with the rotations. I have not been frustrated with that at all, and and that really works for me, uh, given the fact that we've had some issues with that last season that drove us absolutely up a wall. Uh, but this year has been really solid, man. He's he's basically finding ways of putting guys on the floor. Uh, that are of like size and we're able to get rebounds and we're shooting the ball better this year so it makes for a more fun sport to watch for our team overall and um i'm excited man i'm excited i've got a little service here so hopefully we can get back to the stats in a half a second as i continue to look for uh a little more to say from about our squad in regards to uh the opponent actually not our squad but i want to talk about sacramento kind of get into what they did from a, a shooting standpoint but um, having a little trouble with that. Let's see if I can get there. But nevertheless, you guys, you know, I appreciate everybody being patient with me. Um, and this team has really impressed us. Uh, so here we are. Got a little something going for myself here. All right. So bonus had 10 points, 16 boards, and five assists, playing like the all-star that he is, even though he was a minus seven with four turnovers uh, in 24 minutes of play. You got what you needed from him. Vince Koff did not have – Vince Koff, I think that's how you say it, um, has – uh, was uh, seven points minus seven, uh, one of four from the three, three of eleven from uh, uh, from the field. Harrison Barnes had a nice game, five of eleven from the field, three of six from behind the arc with fifteen points. And De'Aaron Fox, as, as we said, had a pretty good game with eighteen points, five assists, three rebounds, on six of twelve from the field, two of five from the f from the three. Uh, Kevin Herter was one for five. He didn't really have the greatest game. They have some guys who were really cold. Uh, Davion Mitchell was one of seven from the field, one of five from the three. One, uh, Jones was one of four from the field, one of three from the three. Uh, Malik Monk, two of nine from the three. We really appreciate when Malik Monk has off nights against us. Trey Lyles, two of seven from the field, one of four from the three. So it was just a lot of inefficiency shooting there. A guy by the name of Slauson, of whom I'm not familiar with, was one of four from the field, oh, a two from the three. So you see the little theme there. It, it, you know, they had some cold guys. Now, uh, Chris Doherty had a pretty good game off the bench for them from a shooting standpoint. Uh, he didn't miss a shot with four of four from the field, two of two from the three with 10 points, uh, three turnovers, two rebounds, two assists. So they just ran a bunch of guys. When I say Sacramento has a deep team, people need to understand what I'm looking at when I see this, the names on this team. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 players on their team. And that is how they really do it, man. It's not just what you would expect from a basketball club. They have solidified themselves last year as a team that's going to use more roster spots than probably what should be necessary for any team ever. And that's just what I know. And they're going to swap out half of these dudes and bring up some more. And they're going to continue to stay healthy throughout the course of the season. And that is how they contend. I know what their secret is. I pay very close attention to these things. And you never hear anything about it. But eventually it's going to come around to being successful for the Sacramento Kings. Because they're just able to stay healthy. While certain teams like Denver and Cleveland only want to run seven players in rotation, they're running 25 of them. So understand that. That's not a game. 
the beam is going to be lit because they're never going to have issues with injuries so long as they continue to keep that strategy in place. <laughs> so they ain't, they ain't getting nothing over on BDF 44. I don't know who else talk about the Kings and how many players they be using from year to year to year. But I'm telling you, they're different. I don't know why everything is, is different for the Kings in regards to how many roster spots they're able to use. I don't know how they're able to slip through the cracks doing this, but they did the same thing last year, and they're going to do the exact same thing this year, and they should probably be at least a second-round team because of it, so long as their main guys uh, continue to play at the level that we expect them to play. Uh, so look out for the Kings. I'm not going to be confused by them when they make the playoffs. It's just it's inevitable. They just run more healthier players just off default for that process and system alone so uh yeah man that is what we saw there was no beam tonight even though the game was in anaheim so it wouldn't have been in either way but nevertheless we were the ones that got the victory tonight and that always feels good preseason game it don't mean nothing but it does mean something from a morale standpoint when you see our young guys becoming victors even in games when they don't shoot very well now as i said in the halftime video Jalen hushafino man I like the point guard. A nice, pure point guard is going to help us even when the scoring is not there. That is very encouraging because a lot of players, guards, particularly in this league, if they ain't scoring, they ain't doing nothing. So I love that about Jalen. He's going to help us on both sides of the floor, and he really is a good passer and decision maker in that way. He's going to have to work on his shooting. Uh, field goal percentage uh, has been a lot it's been a lot wrong there, but just about everything else you want to see from your point guard, he's able to do, and that is important. And he's only going to get better as he continues to move forward. My concern or question is, am I going to get that from Scotty Pippen too over the next five, six years? Whether Scotty's with us or not, is he going to be a pro as good as Jalen? And if so, should I have not taken uh, Cam Whitmore? That's my thing. Should we have not taken Cam Whitmore when he fell to us? Because at the end of the day, we know that was supposed to be the fifth overall pick. And the only thing that was keeping him from being drafted properly was some lies about his health, which I call lies, quote unquote. But I, I don't know exactly what the details were. But I know he's healthy now. And I know he's dunking on everybody's head and playing at a very high level on both sides of the floor as he did in the summer league. Um, I just don't think it's any question about who's a higher level talent, man. I just don't. And when you consider what the Lakers putting together with LeBron James being 170 years old, wouldn't it make sense to have drafted somebody that plays that position that could succeed him afterward? I just don't know that we didn't... Uh, miss out on an opportunity to really bring us an all-star level player just so we can have a pure point guard and make our roster make more sense i think in the long run when you start talking about fits and things like that you don't draft for fit you draft for talent if you know what you're doing a lot of the time and i just think we overthought that thing i, I really think we overthought it I, I, I made sense of it on draft night i told everybody what i saw there in regards to why you take Jalen hushafino because you didn't have a pure point guard you didn't want to ostracize lebron you didn't want to risk losing Rui. it was a lot of different things to look at but at the end of the day at the end of the day if you're going to take a player that's draft that if you're going to miss out on a player that's falling like a like a falling knife you had better make sure it's the right decision because that's exactly what happened with that kid Cam Whitmore's draft stock just fell in a matter of like an hour. He was supposed to be either the fifth or sixth overall pick at the worst, maybe even seven if Utah wanted to take him. Everybody passed on him, and it got to a point where it was rather ridiculous. And in our range, we had no business passing on a player of that level. We really didn't. We had no business passing on him. It made sense from a book standpoint. It made sense from a culture standpoint. But that is not what you draft players for. You draft players who are supposed to be the best over time. Because your culture can go to crap in a matter of a year. And you'll still have the players you drafted. And so this is why you don't do that. It's the same thing that you say in regards to the Portland Trailblazers way back in the day. They took Sam Bowie because they already had Clyde Drexler. Who did they pass on? Michael freaking Jordan. Everybody knew that day they should have took Michael Jordan. But they didn't take Michael Jordan because they already had a guard. Well, now that, how'd that look for them now? You know what I'm saying? These are the type of things you just don't let happen, man. You don't do that. And like I said, I made a great case for why the Lakers should do it. But then I realized we got Scottie Pippen on roster too, who we're not even using properly. Do I think Scottie is that much worse than Jalen Hushafino that I need to take Jalen Hushafino over the fifth overall pick in the draft at 16 or 17 rather? No. And that's the problem. That's the problem. I wasn't considering Scotty Pippen when I was thinking about all that. And we got Scotty on his team. And so it's like, eh, if nothing else, I know how easy it is to get a guard around here because at the end of the day, most of these teams that we've talked about in a lot of situations have too many guards. 
So I can go to the Pacers and get a guard. I can go to the Charlotte Hornets and get a guard. I can go to the OKC Thunder and get a guard. There are guards everywhere and more coming into the draft going forward. So did I need Jalen Hushafino that bad that I pass on potentially a superstar forward? Just because I got Rui and Braun in place, and Braun's a thousand, y'all. So it's like, mm, nah. When you really think about it, no. You take. <laughs> I, I'm 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 reneging on that because at the end of the day, I know Cam Whitmore can really play, man. And Jalen Hushafino, on draft night, we had done homework on him. He's average, bro. He's average. I don't think the all star. I don't think he has all star upside. It's not like we think this dude gonna turn into some Jason Kidd or something like that. Nah. So it's like. Are you sure you're passing up on a guy like that? And and I could look at all the other teams who passed on him as well and say, y'all did this, y'all did that. But we're the Lakers. Are we sure we want to pass on somebody like that? Absolutely not is the answer to that. Absolutely not. Not so that we can solidify having a pure point guard when you can find a million point guards in log jams all over the league. It's just, it's just is what it is, man. Now, Jalen Hushafino could very well develop into something much greater than I think. We've seen it before. And Cam Whitmore could be a player that falls off a cliff and never plays well after year three. Maybe he has a knee injury and it all goes crap. That is what can ultimately make this make sense. But it's from where I'm sitting through three games in the preseason. But from where I'm sitting just period after doing homework on both of those players, it, it was never a question of who was a better talent on draft night. Man. It was never, never a question. Clearly, Cam Whitmore was supposed to be five. He only fell because of some nonsense that took place that I think was actually conspiracy all the way around. So for me, I take Cam Whitmore, give the finger to everybody else who's letting him fall and let the chips fall where they may and then find myself a guard some other way. Plus, we got D'Angelo Russell, who's now coming in playing great. Nobody expected D'Lo to play this well. Do you really draft a point guard when, if you think D'Lo going to play like this? Absolutely not. You surely don't. So that's what it really comes down to, man. Cam Whitmore could play about four different positions and he would have fit in just fine on our team, taking basically Torian Prince's minutes or something like that. You know what I mean? Rui could have still signed. would have had a fantastic team. Uh, you know what I mean? LeBron James wouldn't have done nothing but enjoyed this kid being on his team and giving him spells for games he needs to sit. That's all it would have been, man. Vanderbilt probably would have still signed for the same amount of money because Vanderbilt only signed for a small amount of money. These are things you didn't know were potentially going to take place when on draft night. But now that they've fallen into place, now you're sitting here with Jalen Hushafino knowing damn well he's not going to develop into what you expect Cam Whitmore to develop into. You just don't expect that he will. He's not supposed to. So this is one of the situations where it's like, man, you know, I, I like Jalen. Like I said, I think he could turn into something that could be in between uh, Nick Van Axel and Derek Fisher for us, which is excellent because we won championships with Derek Fisher and Nick Van Axel was an all-star several times. But Cam Whitmore might be the next type of athletic power big, man. He could be the next freaking uh, who, who, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to even try to bring up a name, but but he is a really, really, really high-level player, man. Like, all-star. Maybe three or four all-star appearances in his career type player. For a pure point guard that can't shoot the three in this era? I know better, man. I knew better on draft night. I was just trying to make everybody understand what it was that I saw that our GM was looking at. Which was everything in place in regards to his cap, who he would have to pay down the road, LeBron James not trying to make him feel like he's pushing him out the way. I know what he was thinking, but he knows as well as I know that he probably was better for taking Cam any damn way because he was definitely, definitely the better player. So now we watch him dunk around with the Rockets and the rest of those athletes, and they're probably going to end up winning something because of our mistake. So let them get Jalen Hushfino. See what I'm saying? And not to mention the value aspect of it. If the kid's value dropped and we didn't know why, that's the reason to, to pass on him. But if you know that there's nothing wrong with him and you're just passing on him because everybody else is passing on him, then you made a mistake for your own franchise. And I think that's what a lot of these teams did. At some point around 12 and 13, he shouldn't have kept falling. Teams just followed everybody else and stuck with their game plan, which was a game plan that was flawed because you're taking a lesser player in most of those situations, if not all of them. So... I think I think we dropped the ball, man. As I as I study and assess what I'm looking at through three preseason games, I'm pretty certain we dropped the ball. 
And I know it's early and it's too early to say that, and a lot of things can change, including injury processes. But at the end of the day, you, this, is a, this is a game of value. When you're taking basketball players, it's value. Who's worth more? Who can get you more in a return? Who can get you a first-round pick or a second-round pick or trade, a, get a Kyrie Irving for the, You can't trade Jalen Hutchifino for no Kyrie Irving. But if Cam Whitmore plays as well as he's supposed to, you can couple him with somebody else and get him Kyrie Irving. You know what I mean? That's how talented Cam is expected to be. And that's how good he's already shown himself to be through a couple preseason games. So, I just know better, man. I knew better than draft night. And when I made the um, argument that we should take Jalen, I was assessing everything that I think our GM was looking at. We stayed disciplined. We understood we need to fill our point guard position. We understood we didn't want to push people around and make people feel in all kinds of different ways about what would happen if we brought in another forward. But... I'm telling you, all of that is nothing. When you strip down what your team is going to be and you're trying to rebuild, that don't mean nothing. When you know it's harder to find Cam Whitmore than it is to find Jalen around here. It just is. It just is, man. So that's that's my frustration. I'm not going to sit up here and act like he's Jalen Hushfino's lost me in any way just because he's missing some shots. I think he played pretty well tonight when you consider his stats and how he, he was able to help us in other areas. Um, his weaknesses are his weaknesses. His strengths are his strengths. Cam got plenty of weaknesses. He wasn't the first overall pick in my mind. But we're talking the difference between 5 and 16 here, man. Substantial as hell, to be honest. And we're talking about size as well. Cam is, a, is an athlete. You know what I mean? Jalen's a layup guy. It's just... You're asking for it. Not to mention, Not to mention that you also have Austin Reeves who wants the ball in his hands to play point guard at some point. So... You know, even even if you were to go that route, even if you don't want to look at Scotty, you just put Austin at the one and let him run it. I know better, man. I deeply know better. I just, it just made sense to take Jalen. But sense is not what you make when you're taking the draft. When you're looking at a draft board, you take the best athlete, the best basketball player. Not what makes sense for your system, for what it is you're trying to do overall. Because what you're trying to do overall could change in five minutes. Fire your coach, players get traded. Now you're looking at what makes the most sense for my team. A point guard that's kind of cool or an athlete that can go for 30 and get seven steals in the same game. I, I just I just know better, man. So it is what it is. We'll see how these players develop. Hopefully I'm wrong this time. I flipped back and forth on this. But in a nutshell, what I'm saying is we could have got away with passing on Jalen, taking Cam, and moving forward with what we have based on what I'm seeing. I don't I don't need Jalen. I'm pretty certain we're going to end up trading him at some point. Any damn way. That's the problem. It's just too easy to find guards. It's just how the, that's how, the, how it goes. We're already trying to get Kyrie Irving at some point, it seems. It's just... Yeah, man. Yeah, that's, that's really what I'm thinking through three preseason games. For those who are saying it's too early, I'm not looking at these three preseason games necessarily. I'm just looking at the body of work of what I expect from an athlete like Cam Whitmore dunking on everybody at all times. And I just know how easy it is to find a damn point guard. It's, just, it's super easy, y'all. BDL44, I thank you all for watching.